What's up everyone? Ghulam Ahmed with GeneActivated.ca Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem to you all that are watching and celebrating this month and fasting in this month. I wish you guys all the best and I wish you all the success in your spiritual, mental, emotional health this month. I've been getting a lot of questions about Ghulam Bhai, when is the best time to work out in Ramadan, right? People have different timings, they have different schedules. They want to know if they want to work out before Sahri, after Sahri, uh, after Iftar, before Iftar, after Tarawi. What is the best time? So that, I thought I'd share that best time for you to, with you today in this video. So make sure you still to the end for my final tip on how to actually utilize the best time for you and something that actually will really help you with your fat loss journey. Speaking of your fat loss journey, I've actually started a 20 day Ramadan at home fat loss series where I actually work out with you for 15 to 20 minutes in real time. So if you haven't already checked that out, make sure you head on over into the description. I'll put the link in the description below and make sure you guys check out those workouts and work out with me and make sure you're going to be able to maximize your fat loss in this month. Also, I've also created a Ramadan at home fat loss diet plan and I'll also put that in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out too to again speed up that fat loss process in this month. So now let's get into the topic. So what is the best time to work out in Ramadan? Now, there is a scientific play part of it, but there's also a practical part of it. Let's just talk about the practicality, right? So if we take the option number one, which is, you know, you're going to work out after Sehri, right? In the morning, that's going to be a little bit practical in the sense that you can do it because you've just eaten. But mostly people are getting, to, you know, you have to get to the masjid to pray, namaz, and then you have to most likely go to work or you're trying to catch a little bit of sleep because we really are lacking in a lot of sleep in Ramadan, especially in the summer days because the days are so long, so you don't get enough sleep. So sometimes you just want to get that nap and you're already tired. You're most likely not going to work out. And if you do work out, I wouldn't recommend it because, yeah, you might be able to get a good workout in, but you're going to get really thirsty after. And now you have to go the whole day without water. So I wouldn't recommend that. It's going to make your life a lot harder. Option number two is you actually work out before Sehri. Now, that's also a great option because if you can get up a little bit earlier and do your workout for 15 to 20 minutes, like the ones that I've designed for you, it's not going to take that long. You can get that workout in and then right after that, you can refuel by eating your protein and your water right after the workout. Now, the reason that's not practical is most likely you're not going to get up earlier for Sahur because we're already dying to get up at Saturday time anyways. And to be honest, the month of Ramadan is not so much about fat loss and weight loss as it is about actually increasing in your spirituality. So if you can make yourself get up a 15, 20 minutes earlier, I'd rather you read some Tahajjud Namaz instead of working out at that time. So we'll leave the working out to later in the day where it's more important and we're leaving the prayer, which is more important in the morning time and that before dawn to that part. So now let's get to option number three. Option number three is that you work out before iftar time so 45 to an hour before iftar time you work out at that time where you have the most ability to speed up the fat loss process and burn the most amount of fat at that time so after we haven't been eating for eating for 15 to 20 minutes in the day our body starts using our glycogen stores the glycogen stores are depleted in the body which is pretty much the sugar stores in the liver and it no longer uses sugar because it runs out so now it has to start using other stores the fat stores in our body to now use that for energy so it's already doing that for the last four hours now you have one hour left why not use that time use that ability of your body and actually maximize that by actually working out at the time and burn even more fat so that's what i've recommended in my in my uh, fat loss series for ramadan that you work out 45 to 30 minutes before iftar opens so that it's the time where you're going to burn the most amount of fat most amount of calories and as soon as you finish your workout what happens if that opens and you can now have your water, which because you're going to be thirsty by the end of the workout and you can also refuel and take that protein in, uh, in, in so you can replenish your muscles as well. So you can eat and you can drink water right after. Now, for some people, that's also not practical, especially for females, because, you know, you're doing the iftar cooking or, you know, if you're just really, really tired and that's OK. But to be honest, you can still get it done because a lot of times, you know, people, they work out without eating anything in the morning and they're working out in a fastest state. So it's kind of like the similar situation. So you can get it done. But if that is not practical for you, too, even though I think that's the best way to do it, you can also do it uh, after 
Isha or Tarabi prayer, which is going to be my fourth option. I don't recommend doing it between Maghrib and Isha because that's the time you're going to be eating and praying and spending time with your family. And there's not that much time anyways, it's about an hour, an hour and a half between Maghrib and Isha prayers. So you might as well do it after your Isha prayers and Tarabi prayers if you want to hit Tarabi. So if you're someone that's wor working on waking up for Tahajjud, then you can pretty much skip your Tarabi if you really want to. And you can get those Nawafil in the morning. And after Isha, you can spend 30 minutes to 40 minutes either in the gym if you're working out in the gym or if you're working out and following my fat loss uh, workout series, you can do that at home for 30 minutes. So a uh, reason to do that is because number one, you're going to have energy because you've already eaten about an hour and a half before after you did your iftar and now you've had time to digest that food. Now you can work out with a lot of energy and after that you can still refuel, have some water because you can be drinking water throughout and after and you can also eat after, replenish a little bit, get a quick snack, have your protein shake, casein, I mentioned that in my diet plan so make sure check that out why you want to take casein versus whey protein during Ramadan. So you can take that protein shake and then go to bed and then wake up again in the morning for sahur. So having all those four or five options, let me know what you think is the best option that's going to work out for you. But my final tip is at the end of the day, guys, the best time for you to work out during Ramadan is the best time that works for you. So that's completely up to your lifestyle, what you feel best, how you feel your best, where you feel your best, where you can find time. So if you can only find time after, if, after Saturday time, then that's fine. And you can maintain the whole day without, you know, getting too thirsty, then go ahead and do that. If you like to do it before uh, Tahajjud Namaz or after Tahajjud Namaz, do that. If you want to do it before Iftari or after Iftari or between Maghrib and Isha, it doesn't really matter, right? At the end of the day, having the optimal time to do it versus not doing it at all, you know, it's, you have to weigh the odds. So I'd rather you always just do the workout versus worrying so much about what time you're going to be doing it. Because at the end of the day, if you just keep getting lost in the time and not actually work out, that's even worse, right? At the end of the day, as long as we're getting in a little bit of a workout, 15 to 20 minutes is really all you need in Ramadan because we are, are really depleted in energy and we're also tired and we don't want to overexhaust ourselves. And we don't have time either, right? We're, we don't really have time to work out for one hour between all the prayers that we have to do too. Because the real purpose of Ramadan is to actually increase in our spirituality in Ramadan and really, you know, get a better connection with our Creator and increase in our love for the humanity and for the Creator. So these are my tips for what is the best time to work on Ramadan. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below for what time is the best time that works for you. And guys, please share this video with your friends, brothers and sisters that are also fasting and working out in this month of Ramadan to share the blessings. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.